Hello again, this is Alex with MasterChartsTrading.com and this is Market Recap of Friday, August 17, 2018. Uh, upfront, I apologize because this presentation has been recorded on a different computer. My other one is having a little bit of an issue, so I'm recording on a different computer. But uh, the gist is hopefully going to be the same. I unfortunately don't have a pointer, so you're going to have to just kind of follow the mouse. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So once again, click the uh, like button and subscribe to this channel. Uh, we'll go through the same thing as usual, stocks. Um, we'll look at utilities, which are, could be breaking out. I know. And we'll look at defensive sectors, which are outperforming, especially telecom too. So dollar is definitely showing some signs of cooling off we'll look at that this is affecting gold uh, oil is also at a decent level uh, and we'll look at the short and natural gas and finally finish off with cryptocurrencies so let's immediately start because uh, i have very very limited power on this computer and unfortunately no charger additionally <laughs> so it's going to be an interesting presentation. But overall, here's S&P 500. Um, very close to fresh highs. Uh, fresh highs are not that far off. They are uh, literally just a few points away. And this is uh, clearly a bullish chart. So United States stocks are clearly in the bull market. Uh, here's Dow Jones. You know, also approaching fresh highs, QQQ, approaching close to fresh highs, um, IWM, the Russell 2000 small cap index, close to fresh highs. So overall, unequivocal bull market in the United States stocks. Uh, some of the defensive sectors, so we will look at... Um, Basically, yeah, I wanted to say about the rest of the world, right? <clears throat> so a lot of politics are happening right now. Um, for for whatever reason, uh, I I try not to follow too many too many news. I kind of take news uh, as a very distant secondary source of information uh, that I trade on. Uh, so. When I look at S&P 500, to me, this is a bullish chart. When I look at Europe, for example, VGK, <clears throat> this is a bearish chart. In other words, you can see this is a fresh low. Um, you can see the indicator, my indicator lines are catching this price action quite nicely. So, pretty nice move there. If you decide to uh, short VGK, the Europe um, I mean, for whatever reason, the stocks in Europe are, the investors in Europe or investors in European equities are thinking that um, the future is not as bright in Europe currently as it is in the United States markets. So you can see S&P at fresh highs, VGK is approaching uh, or actually hit 52-week lows. The same is true of emerging markets. Here's EEM. And I maintained uh, since at least June uh, of this year that this is a uh, fund to be avoided. In other words, emerging market fund. And this is a diversified emerging market. So overall, emerging markets are, does, they don't look good. They look like they're in a downtrend. And I think the downtrend began here on June 27. Uh, 2018. So there's that breakdown that we need to, uh, you know, really pay attention to. So this is the big problem. You know, technical picture is showing that this is a switch into a bear uh, trend. And from here on, yes, basically, if you are um, comfortable with trading stocks on the upside, but also trading stocks on the downside. In other words, you are comfortable with borrowing stock now, selling it at current price, then selling, then buying it back later at a lower price. Uh, 
return on the stock. So in other words, you're comfortable with sh shorting. Then you can do that and you have a margin account, you can short stocks. And once again, here are the indicator lines. You can find out more about them at messagesstrading.com. And they show clearly um, good levels to watch uh, where to uh, buy and sell. So I'm personally more of a conservative trader, so I would have waited until about 45.20 or so. And we basically kind of touched that level, but nothing is 100%. So even aggressive shorts were rewarded. So for example, if I was uh, aggressively trading this uh, chart, I would have shorted it immediately on breakdown uh, on June 27th. And I would have put my stop uh, well above it here at the blue line. So even if I shorted it here, by now I would have been rewarded. You know, I had to draw, you know, sit through this uh, few weeks of um, stock fluctuation. But that's, you know, it's a normal thing. We, we always sit through lots of fluctuation. That's why we have stops. <clears throat> my personal preference is to have wider stops and smaller positions. Uh, your mileage will obviously uh, vary. So this, this ETF is bearish and uh, you know if if basically either avoided i would basically either avoid it or if i was really interested in i would short it and currently uh, i would short it at 45 bucks or so so again united states equities next to fresh highs <clears throat> europe at fresh lows, emerging markets at fresh lows, China, fresh lows, you can see. <clears throat> exactly, look at this, this is where I would short it, right, the right of the indicator line. So, uh, yeah, not looking good currently, some countries will look okay, so here's Japan, Look, it looks a little better, not like especially great but um, somewhat better uh, here is um, Canada EWC I, I don't really trade this guys but Canada looks okay better than other countries currently you notice the price action here very you know the indicator lines catch this uh, price action quite well so do find out more about them at masterchestrading.com uh, Mexico, EWW, maybe it's possible this is a breakout on August 7, 2018, but then again we're pushing lower. So I would just be very careful with um, questionable charts, and this is one of those questionable charts, EWW. Um, I would probably look to S&P 500 for the direction of the United States obviously markets um, but here is the dilemma you know if we look at Europe um, it's at fresh low so does that mean that United States markets will also roll over or does it mean that Europe will uh, turn around and continue higher because the correlations between the various stocks around the world is extremely high and when we need, we, we we wonder if um, the weakness in pretty much the entire world, but the United States, is going to translate into eventual weakness in the United States equities. We'll see. All right, uh, let's continue. Excuse me. So we will look at utilities and bonds and treasuries and defensive sectors next. All right, so let's look uh, utility, utilities, XLU. So looks like a breakout has, well, on this chart has finally occurred on the 15th of August. If we look on the, the index Dow Jones Industrial, here the breakout occurred on 6th of August we we'll look on uh, equal weight utilities, 
uh, you can see that the breakout occurred even earlier and look at the very nice move here uh, actually occurred here on the July 3rd with a very nice move uh, towards the highs for the move and there is the 5% move or so so utilities are looking good um, that is uh, definitely helping the market utilities are not a big part of the market spy I think it's like 3% uh, but still you know they are part of the market and uh, if they're moving higher then uh, that's definitely helpful for the market uh, real estate you can see at fresh highs um, had an alert out to my subscribers and that's about five uh, almost six percent gain uh, from the june 5th 2018 alert <clears throat> and here is another one of interest xlp consumer staples very close to a breakout in my opinion uh, again you can find out more about this indicator lines at master chess trading i can share these indicators with you all you need to do is sign up at master charts trading.com <clears throat> there it is so staples utilities real estate are more of a defensive tilt sectors the possibly are showing a flight to safety but i wouldn't really read too much into this uh, with stocks it's the correlations between the various stock funds is very high so i wouldn't necessarily start um, to think about that stocks are how can I say it? Um, if the utilities are breaking higher, that um, does not mean that bonds will be breaking out higher as well. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on here, but it's not loading. I wanted to show you a chart that I usually show uh, where the correlations are high between the various stock funds, but I think it's kind of understood. Uh, so here what i wanted to show utilities are moving higher and at the same time tlt the bonds also moved uh, significantly higher so for now i'm still thinking that this is a bearish security but i am now questioning this assumption because um, i mean the move here from 20th of july into the first of august was decent you know not a huge move um, what from a bear perspective what worries me worries me since i'm bearish i was bearish here in july on tlt what worries me about this is the uh, fact that we did not make a new low and then kind of bounced just exactly at the support resistance lines and to me this this is kind of one of those behaviors of stocks that looks suspiciously uh, almost bullish uh, when when the when the stocks push lower a new low is not made and then exactly at the support resistance lines there is a bounce very suspicious looking so unless here we see a you know strong selling and maybe we do make a fresh low then yeah but I'm now wondering because notice here the European equivalent of TLT is bond B U N D. The, it broke out. It w it went higher, and I'm now a little uh, not 100 percent what's happening. So I am looking at TLT more from a perspective of possible reversal. Uh, but to confirm this reversal, we need to see a close above 124.50 currently. Here is the inverse TLT or uh, tw 30 plus year treasury yield. And um, <clears throat> just looking at this chart um, currently on the 
17th of August here, I would think that we should be buying this chart. In other words, we should be selling bonds. But again, I am now not 100% because of this tapping action here. Notice how the, ta the indicator, the, uh, the rate, the interest tre treasury yield tapped out exactly at this green indicator line, which is a support resistance line, and then it rolled over. So now I'm wondering if we're going to get a, a further move uh, to the downside and maybe we'll uh, move on a 30-year treasury at 2.8775. And that is a very critical, important level because if that is broken, then TLT, the bonds, will, most, will have most likely broken out above this uh, 124.50 level. So this could be viewed as a potential flight to safety and it makes perfect sense because here's European bond BUND moving towards highs while the European equities VGK moving towards making you know new lows. So pretty clear unequivocal signs of a flight to safety at the very least in Europe and this are this are very good proxies for uh, European uh, sentiment. Uh, so here in the United States I'm looking at TLT, maybe, maybe we're bottoming out, maybe we'll finally make a, a breakout here. Here's LQD, the investment grade corporates. Um, also behavior inconsistent with a um, bearish security uh, at the very least, here on the 23rd of July, I thought we were going to make a strong selling. Uh, let me see where TLT started being sold. Yeah, on the 20th, in the 20th of July area. So, not really, not really a push lower. In fact, a high for the move from the uh, June 2018 lows. So now, you know, we'll see where this goes, basically. Here's the overall investment grade um, stock uh, bond market, rather. Similar picture. Uh, here's the 23rd of July selling that did not really push through to fresh lows, and and then the security turned around and is actually approaching uh, highest for the move. There's the highest for the move from the 29th of May. So. Again, I'm wondering if uh, now we're seeing a true flight to safety and perhaps um, European and emerging markets uh, will pull S&P 500 lower. Unless something happens and maybe it's the opposite will happen. Maybe European equities and emerging markets continue higher from here finally and uh, you know no more worries about shorts. <clears throat> so telecom, okay, I wanted to show equal weight staples, equal weight consumer staples. This is what a breakout looks like right there uh, today on August 17, 2018. I'm going to put an arrow there. There's that breakout. And uh, yeah, looking like it's going to go higher from here. IYZ, same thing. IYZ, this is a telecom. Also interesting, uh, you know, bottom in action here, as you can, as you can see back in May, uh, that was the low and then we're making higher highs, higher lows. And now we actually broke out above uh, this red resistance, support resistance line. You can find out more about them in MasterChef's trading. And IYZ is uh, the telecom sector very close to, um, I think, a breakout to into a fresh bull market so i am watching for this uh, my subscribers are definitely also watching for this and you can watch yourself if you get these indicators on your chart and you can do this by signing up at masterchastrading.com dollar so let's continue to the forex universe all right continuing to the forex universe now let's look at dollar index first as it finally pulls away from the highs for the move and vast majority of currencies again around the world are also gaining versus the dollar for the past uh, few days. 
um, you know, three days or so. But of course, you can see that number one, um, why do I even think that this is a bullish chart? The US dollar is in an uptrend because here on the 28th of May, we see a breakout above support resistance lines. The support resistance lines are indicators that you can find out more about at MasterChartStrading.com. They are a price action indicators. They catch the price action quite well. So here's that breakout on the 28th of May. After this trend change, I um, would think about only buying this chart. I would not think about selling this chart. In other words, I want to be long, I don't want to short. So here we have a breakout. Basically anywhere immediately we can buy and breakout. And you can see that it would have been a, just an incredible opportunity to buy in this area around 93 because now we are at 97. So this is a very big move for the dollar. So let's look at Euro, Euro versus US dollar. You can see that Euro is in a downtrend. The downtrend began on 25th of May, right there, with a breakdown below the support resistance lines. Again, anywhere, you can even short immediately upon the break, and, but anywhere here would have been a great opportunity. Let's say you, you know, were really late and you didn't really get in. You could do potentially do what's called an aggressive short. In other words, not a very deep pullback. Um, but still, nevertheless, even the aggressive shorts here for the euro can would have made a, a very nice profit at 370 pips. This move, this move was very strong. Uh, even worth, uh, worse off was a British pound. Here's the British pound with a very nice move. Let me see how much is this move. This is a 587 pip move, another beautiful move here. Um, US dollar versus Canadian dollar. I was hoping for, because the US dollar versus Canadian, it's reversed. So we, I was hoping for a deeper pullback uh, to about 1.28. And looks like we're gonna get there. Um, just based on this price action, let me zoom into it because I think it's very educational can see that uh, now whenever we're trading well above here you know at the green lines above here then I'm thinking we're definitely in the uptrend and here we have um, on the 25th of July a definitive close below the green line here and now it just, it just kind of meanders but here we have one two three and then four opportunities for bulls to take over the initiative and notice that they failed here at all times so most likely now i see a move for the canadian dollar uh, to 1.289 right there and that could be a potentially very nice opportunity to buy it uh, buy united states dollar with the canadian dollar uh, let me see what else I wanted to cover. So we got the United States, we must do Mexican peso. Strange chart, uh, I think, because if vast majority of currencies are moving in favor of, you, uh, you know, currency pairs are moving in favor of US dollar, the Mexican peso is back in the trend and actually appreciating. Um, don't know where this is going. Let's find out. US dollar versus uh, Swiss franc. I think we're, Swiss franc is getting ready for another drop. Uh, it's a nice consolidation here around the green line. And um, I think if the, the index in the dollar index itself cooperates, uh, we could see a nice breakout higher on the US dollar versus Can um, Swiss franc. In other words, again, we will be buying US dollar with Swiss franc buying the US dollar. We're not going to be selling the US dollar. Um, let me see what else I want to cover. US dollar versus Japanese yen. Also a bullish chart in favor of the dollar. Japanese yen is a little bit goofy. It doesn't follow the index exactly. 
So, and it's also thought of as a safe haven kind of currency. So, perhaps in the next few weeks uh, we will see another kind of safe haven status re reassess itself, uh, reaffirm itself. Maybe we'll see a pullback. Uh, in favor of the Japanese yen here. But I think this should be bought for now. I think this is still a bullish chart. Again, I would be buying the US dollar, in this case with Japanese yen. And I wanted to show the US dollar versus Turkish lira. Everybody is obsessed with that for some reason. I think the more important chart is the US dollar versus um, of Chinese yuan. And you can see that it just made a uh, the yuan just made a fresh low at uh, 6.95 per dollar. Now I do see a, a pullback still for the US dollar, uh, rather yuan will most likely gain uh, about maybe 2% or so, but I think again there at about 6.68 uh, I think I would be buying US dollar with uh, Chinese yuan as well and uh, so they yeah, the Turkish lira so yes it's kind of important but not terribly important I guess but it is important in the sense of a chart price action and here it is um, I wanted to show that price action so yesterday on 16th of August you can see that the price touched exactly that uh, my indicator lines right there at 6.69764. Next day we see a big rally, a 9.3% rally. So in other words, if we had a limit buy, but even if we had a limit buy on close, which was uh, at uh, 5.805, this was already, you know, 9% gain in one session. So the indicator lines work quite well, do sign up at Master Charts Trading. All right, so dollar finally showing signs of cooling off. Again, dollar should be bought on any significant pullback. And next we'll go into gold and where to short gold. All right, so we covered the dollar. Now let's look at the paper gold counterpart of the dollar XAU USD so for those who are new to forex it is trade the forex is traded in currency pairs so we have um, on the top we have XAU on the bottom we have USD so here we just need to think in terms of who is winning the battle is it the lower part of this equation, the USD, or the upper part of the, uh, this equation, XAU. And whichever part of the equation is winning, that's the way the chart will go. In this case, USD is clearly winning the battle because you can see an enormous move down for gold. <laughs> it's a very big move, honestly. Let me see how many percent. Um, but just from where the breakdown occurred, and the breakdown occurred on the 26th of June 2018, so we can see a about, let me see, 7.7% move for this uh, instrument. You know, it's a very big move for, uh, for a Forex instrument. Definitely there is a uh, people like to ask me question if if the market is overbought or oversold well okay since i don't use any really indicators to tell me if the market is overbought or oversold but just looking at this graph um, i can see that it is definitely oversold because it just moved a very there was a really large move in one direction and now there is a Basically, we need to unwind this big move. Uh, and so the weak hands, so to speak, who decided, oh, look, there's a huge breakdown. Let's go ahead and short it here. Uh, they will be wiped out on a move higher because they most likely put their stop somewhere very close because they think that the continuation will be to the downside. So they will be taken out. Uh, their positions will be shaken out at a loss. Um, 
Me personally, again, I'll be looking to let me look at the gold futures, GC1 exclamation. So yeah, here we go. This is even better. I already put the arrows there. So I would be looking to short gold uh, and potentially gold miners on a move um, up. Now, where that those levels are. <clears throat> Uh, if you trade gold or any commodity, I would uh, highly recommend you look at the futures. So in this case, the futures are GC1 exclamation point versus the you know exchange traded fund GLD. So you can, I mean, GLD tracks gold futures pretty well, but I think the price action is more mm, descriptive. In the gold futures, uh, on the gold futures chart. So aggressive shorts would most likely want to sell immediately at 1201 or 1200 dollars here. Um, again, I am more conservative trader, so I would be waiting for a deeper um, jump in gold prices to about 1243. From current levels, that's about a about a five percent. Um, gain but again that gain uh, the trend is down so I would I would sell it I would short it I would not be looking to uh, I would not be looking for this bearish security to say that oh wow I caught the very bottom of this uh, move and then I bought it at the very bottom no bearish securities have a tendency of continuing to the downside so bearish securities should be shorted they should not be you should not be looking to time the very very bottom there, there's, it's, it's pretty much impossible to do so uh, again on this chart gold futures bearish I would sell them uh, GDX same thing very big move um, you know here is GDX my annotated chart uh, we traded at master chess trading um, basically you can see in those short here short here short here and again I would be looking to short myself I would say at around 20 94 21 dollars or so they, they, this could be a very nice uh, levels to watch um, on a bounce to enter on the short side all right uh, continuing to oil here is oil future CL1 exclamation point this is a bullish chart, in other words, I would be only looking to buy it. And it is currently approaching very interesting levels um, of $64. So I think bottoming action will and most likely unfold here. Um, unless, of course, we see a significant breakdown. In that case, we'll need to reassess. But for now, this to me, this looks like a bullish security. And I would be looking to enter on the long side <clears throat> if I was trading this one. And natural gas futures, here it is, uh, NG1 exclamation point on trading view. Um, previously, uh, on, in May, end of May, I entered myself short. Uh, I, I, I bought puts on UNG, on uh, United States natural gas. Uh, I did the same thing just now. I bought puts uh, on the 15th of August, a few days ago. So far, let me zoom in on this price action. Again, it is quite interesting. You can see that so far this red indicator line is acting as resistance. We have one, two, three, four, five touches of it. And so far, no close above it. So to me, this looks like a promising chart because I am short uh, this chart. And finally, let's look at cryptocurrencies. Some people are still trading this, most likely. I mean, a lot of people are still trading this. Uh, here's BTC, USD, Bitcoin versus US dollar. I, I didn't mean to laugh. It was just something else here. Uh, BTC, USD, bearish securities, uh, security rather. We had a... Um, I had a conversation with a friend of mine, and I'll tell you when that conversation took place. It took place in March. And I already said, okay, guys, under no circumstances, this should be bought. 
So here you can see Bitcoin as early as February, and I can I actually name the date, February 4th, 2018. There it is. There's that bearish breakdown. From here on, nothing, don't do anything else but sell it. Sell it, sell it. Where do you sell it? You sell it. I usually sell it on close below my own indicator lines, which you can find out more at masterchassradian.com. So on close, on close, on close, you can see on close, for example, here is a gain of 33%. Then basically Bitcoin collapsed to fresh lows. And here you can see the aggressive shorts. In other words, there was not even a bounce to the previous support resistance. They just sold it, sold it here on the 10th of June, 2018. If we advance a little further, we can see more selling. And there's that selling. Perfect opportunity to sell on the 26th of July with a 24% gain almost. So right now, yeah, Bitcoin is just nowhere. We just need to wait for another bounce, ideally to 11,000 currently, if it even makes it there, and then we need to sell it. Ethereum, ETH, USD, even just collapsed basically, and there is the collapse, latest collapse, took it down 46%. Uh, and notice there the selling opportunities. I would say, again, I usually sell or short on close below indicator lines. Again, if you're aggressive, those are perfect opportunities. And 22nd of June, 3rd of July, 10th of July, and then another one here on the 18th of, 18th of July, and then it just collapsed. 46% in your favor. Litecoin, LTC, USD, I think this is a record holder for a just uh, magnitudes of collapses. And this one collapsed 60, so almost 70% from when I uh, first, well, first started talking about it. So here, here are those opportunities uh, on the 25th of April and on the 8th of May 2018. So again, very easy. You can see it clearly on the chart. You don't have to guess. You can see that clearly there is a level and we have a clear direction. And let me show you where the direction came from. Because we had, there we go. We had initially, we were in an uptrend because we were trading above this blue line. And yes, we can buy here. But then we had a collapse, a breakdown, on the 1st of February 2018. There it is. And from here on, we basically sell. We don't think about buying. There is a rejection spike on the 20th February 2018. Stop and close above the blue line. So again, you need to calculate your position correctly. But overall, very easy to trade. And you can see nice... Uh, big gains of late. Uh, again, you can pretty much trade any currency uh, with, my, with my indicators. So go uh, do head over to uh, masterchesstrading.com, click on alerts and indicators and sign up for one of the plans. Now, uh, plans here are as you can get alerts only. In other words, you're not going to get the indicators. That's pretty good too. I sent uh, several alerts per day sometimes. Uh, Usually about five to seven alerts per day on average I send to my subscribers. Uh, but here at this um, higher level, you can get um, the alerts and you can also get the indicators. You can trade yourself, uh, you know, because you can clearly see where the levels are. And you just buy and sell at those levels uh, because they're clearly indicated on your chart. <clears throat> Finally, here, uh, if you sign up for the... Uh, one of the yearly plans, then if you're interested, you can uh, we can schedule a phone consultation with me and we can discuss some of your stocks. Also, uh, I'm thinking about adding additional services and uh, relocating um, pretty much Forex, gold, um, oil, natural gas, Bitcoin, etc., into sort of a separate service because it's more of an advanced stuff. Uh, and it's not necessarily suitable for beginner traders. 
to you really need to know what you're doing with leverage and um, you know for with forex you can easily screw things up <clears throat> so again uh, do sign up and hit the like button subscribe to this channel thanks for watching and have another great trading week bye bye